that Dirty Water TV. I'm Huey Lewis. This is Steven Tyler. James Montgomery. Hey, I'm Grace Potter. I'm Darius Rutgers. I'm Susan Tedeschi, and I love that Dirty Water TV. I love that Dirty Water TV. Ow! Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Dirty Water TV music series. I'm Kevin Flight. I'm Erica Kelda. We are here at the wonderful paradise and it's a very special night. Before we get into the special night though, we gotta thank our sponsor, Jack Daniels Tennessee Honey. The sweet taste of Jack Daniels Tennessee Honey. We already talked about Kevin's sweet taste for Jack Daniels Tennessee Honey. We also have to thank Live Nation and Crossroads Presents so much for tonight. That's right, excellent sponsors, but hey, it's a party, a big launch celebration going on here tonight at the Paradise. It is, and if you kind of like peek down here and see what's happening, it looks like a really good crowd. So we're launching Do 617. It's a music listings website, all things music. I mean, it's the hottest site to go to to see what's happening. Speaking of the scene, we got an action-packed show to bring to you tonight. State radio frontman Chadwick Stokes. Hey, he had a big benefit called Calling All Crows, and our own Jay Anderson was there to catch up and learn all about it. And Sarah Robinson down with Corey Smith, our country star, huge country star. Yeah, and a big part of music, it's the management scene. And when you're talking local band management, people that have started here and gotten big on the national scene, it's all about Dalton Sim. And we're gonna talk to him. He's done Dispatch, Guster, I mean, so many great bands, and Sarah's gonna catch up with him as well. Bands that we grew up with, too. I mean, everybody knows a Guster song. All right, but hey, we're gonna kick it off with my man Jay Anderson. He's talking to Chadwick Stokes. What's happening, Jay? I am with the man of the evening, so to speak, Mr. Chad Stokes. So you might know Chad from a band called State Radio. You might know him from his extensive community activism. You might know him from a little band called Dispatch. Or you might know him from the grocery store down the street, because don't you live up the road? I do, I do. Just make a plan. JP, why we're here this evening, it's the culmination of a very special weekend for you guys. It's the sixth annual Calling All Crows benefit weekend. And um, I know since 2008, you guys have done some pretty amazing things. We just wanted to be, uh, make our life more than um, just the inside of venues as we toured around. And so we started doing service projects and it was a cool way to meet up with folks. And so we started off with refugee camps in Su Sudan to try to help uh, the women and children there. And it's been a, a wonderful six years with amazing people coming out, fans coming out to meet us before shows and getting dirty with us. In 2010, when you were in town at the Pavilion with John Butler Trio, you partnered with Bikes Not Bombs and you made everybody ride a bike out to the Pavilion. I think one of the worst things about being on the road environmentally is all the emissions you know, from the vehicles on the way to concerts. One of the best things any band can do is have shows where public transportation or uh, you know, there's a great bike lane. Does your tour bus still run on veggie oil? Yeah, it, uh, it works, runs on biodiesel and our van is also biodiesel and we try to fill up and find, you know, the, the system is against you. It's hard, sometimes it's, we go way out of our way in Wyoming or whatever to find this, <laughs> you know, guy who hand cranks the, the diesel himself, you know, so it, it does take an effort. And another part um, that, you know, one thing that Calling All Crows offers is it's called an alternative brake tour. Could you talk to us about those, what those entail? Yeah, that's, that's been one of our most fun things. It's like we, we rent a bus and a bunch of kids shadow us for, a, for six days. You know, it started off being instead of going to Cancun or whatever, come on the road with this band. We've done it all over the world where bands get in the bus right behind us and, <laughs> and we hang out and we, you know, we kind of uh, tandem you know, tour around the country. Is there any one event, I don't want to say cause because you guys, you have countless causes. Is there any one event or project that really sticks out to you? I really like the, the activist stuff, um, you know, with like the anti-death penalty or game in favor of gay marriage. Down in Georgia where Troy Davis was killed, we went down there and went to the courthouse and stood there in protest of, of what they were going to do and what they ended up doing. I'm about to be I think that one's, you know, pretty, pretty close to my heart. I know that means a lot to Troy. 
A lot to him to know that people, that 5,000 people in Boston were thinking about him for four minutes. So shifting gears a little bit, what's going on this evening? Now, over the course of, you know, the, the, the history of the Calling All Crows benefit, you've done everything from fire up the state radio machine, bring yeah, him yeah. here. You've hopped up there with your friends from RX Bandits yeah. and White uh, in White Buffalo. What, what's in store for us this evening? I have a, a lot of people from my hometown of Sherburne here, a small town. <laughs> but uh, my friend Wes is playing bass. My friend Marcus helps singing. My two brothers are playing trombone, singing, and dancing with me. <laughs> Uh, my friend Darren, also from Sherburne, singing lead on a couple songs. So speaking of playing in front of a hometown crowd, you, you've sort of, you've really done it all. You've played the House of Blues, you've sold that out, you've sold out Paradise, you've sold out The Garden, you've even, you've even sold out Comcast Center. Was there any point in any of those iterations where you actually sat back and said, I've made it? Probably playing The Garden, because Great Woods was like that too, the Comcast Center. Just you know, to think of when we used to try to jump the fence and we were just so psyched to be there and that, that to us what seemed like we're gods on stage, you know, and you know, it never really sets in, it never, it's never really like, you never really believe it. We've had these really cool milestones and, and, and shows, and, but it's hard, sometimes it's hard to believe because it, it is really like a, a dream come true, so it's, uh, but you never think you're as good or as cool as the people that I was going to see at Great Woods or at the Garden, you know? So what's in store for 2014? Uh, we're doing, we're recording these new songs in Chicago with a guy named Brian Deck and Sam Beam from Iron and Wine. He's, they're going to co-produce the record in Chicago, and that happens all in January, and then I do a, another living room tour in February, and then a, a European living room tour in March. Any festivals coming up? Yeah, yeah, there's some dispatch festivals. Oh, there's a folk festival in Colorado in August. That's cool, because dispatch can kind of lean that, that folky way. After all, he cannot speak or walk. Let's send him at the moon. Do circles round the sun. It's fun to be you know, accepted by that, the folk world. I've always been into that stuff, so it's, it's a good time for music. Chad, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Have a great show this evening, and all the best with all your Calling All Crows endeavors. Thanks, and man. you at home, head on over to callingallcrows.org, read up. You can donate, you can volunteer, you can get involved. And, you know, if we all got involved, I think we could all really do something special. So, again, Chad, thank you. That's tonight's Big Ticket, brought to you by Hig Tickets. Here's what else is going on around town. Up next, Sarah Rodman talks with rising country star Corey Smith. That's when Dirty Water TV returns. Welcome back to Dirty Water TV. I'm Erica Kilda. And I'm Kevin Flay. We are here at the Paradise, bringing you the Dirty Water TV music series, brought to you by our sweet friends, Jack Daniels, Tennessee Honey, and of course, the area's biggest and best music purveyors, Crossroads and Live Nation. And if you really want to check out a new music rising star, Corey Smith, young country guy, adorable. Maybe he's wearing shirts like this, I don't know. You gotta be kind of country to pull off a shirt like this. Maybe. <laughs> but we're gonna kick it over to Sarah Rodman. Yeah, Sarah Rodman, she's catching up with Corey Smith. Sarah. What's happening, lady? Thanks, guys. I am here with the pride of Jefferson, Georgia, Corey Smith, a fabulous country singer-songwriter who, if you don't know about him yet, you really should, and I think that you will soon. Those in the know know that Corey is smart and funny and talented and writes really great songs and was kind enough to sit down and talk with us today. How are you? I'm doing well. Happy to be here. I want to start right in with, Corey has a song called, I Love Everyone. I love black people. I love brown people. I love Muslims and Jews, Hindus and atheists too. Yes, I love everyone. In the song, Corey talks about loving all different kinds of people. Tell, talk to me a little bit about where the inspiration for that song came from. Well, I was playing a show in Lexington, Kentucky, and I went out after the show. It was a big, big night, sold out show, and so we went down to one of the bars in Lexington and had some, some of Kentucky's finest bourbons. And this really drunk kid who had been at the show came up to me and he started spouting off all these racial slurs like F these people, F those people. I thought, why in the world would this kid think that I wouldn't be offended by that? And it, it kind of bothered me. And the next day I was up in Virginia 
and I was playing at this amphitheater that was out, out in the woods, and so I had some time to walk around the woods and think, and that was still bothering me, and the conclusion I came to is that he figured I'm a country singer, so maybe I share the same racist tendencies that, that he does, and that sort of disturbed me, and, and then I started humming, I love black people, and the rest just sort of uh, came from there. I used to be a, a social studies teacher. I taught high school social studies for four years. You know, I'm from a small town in Georgia. You know, I was raised in a Baptist church. I'm white. In, in a school like that, I learned, you know, to, to love and accept kids who had backgrounds from all over the world. I like to think that, that my music can foster that sort of tolerance and openness. And let's face it, country music's not known for its tremendous diversity or, or tolerant message. What I think is also really interesting about your career is that you really blazed your own trail in a way that people don't do anymore. I mean, you, you made it happen for yourself. You released your own albums, you started touring, you built up this fan base, kind of on a wing and a prayer, right? Thankfully, the, the technology's come along to, to uh, make it a lot easier to, to, to share music, um, but fans have really made this happen. Um, so I feel a great sense of responsibility to them uh, to, to stay, stay true to, to my calling, let them know that, that this is something we're, we're in together. I wouldn't be here without them. I want to talk a little bit about Maybe Next Year is a big song of yours, and you have a lot of songs, I think, that go to this place where you're talking about something serious, but you also have a lot of sort of humor in it. I get drunk and obnoxious and wake up the next day swearing I'm never drinking again. You have this ability to be melancholy and funny at the same time, and I'm, I'm curious about what appeals to you about putting those two things together. A lot of those songs just start with me laughing about something stupid I did and then continuing to explore the issue. And what I really like about your new single, Corey's got a new song out called Ain't Going Out Tonight, is I feel like that song is the sequel to maybe next year. The guy who keeps talking about how he's going to change and grow up and maybe next year has actually decided the time has come. Tonight he's gonna hang out with the family and watch TV and snuggle and not go out and get drunk with his friends. I like this yeah. guy. <laughs> yeah. I ain't going out tonight, no. Leaving you just don't feel right. I like writers like like Paul Simon or or, or Bob Dylan, who you you can listen to their catalog and, and really trace their life and, and hear their development. And that's the way I've, I've liked to think about my writing. You know, you've been doing this for a long time now and you've had a lot of, you know, sort of wonderful experiences, some less wonderful experiences. What's been a high point for you in this journey? Uh, there there have been a lot. Most recently, I guess, uh, the debut at Grand Ole Opry. That, wow. that was really cool uh, and felt very validating. Still we go down to that college town when my bulldogs play at home. And I had all my family there. Uh, my grandparents even came up from Georgia and uh, had some of my wife's family come down from Ohio and uh, some of my best friends were there. And you know, there were, there were definitely tears shed that night. It felt like, um, you know, the culmination of, a, of a, a, a lot of hard work. I was 21. Thank y'all very much. God bless you. Take care, Grand Ole Opry. But all along the way, you know, there are these shows that I just felt like weren't possible. You know, selling out the, the Chastain Park in Atlanta the, the first time. Even the first time I sold out the Georgia Theater in Athens were just things that, you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't think were possible. Um, so all along the way, there, there have been a lot. I think we're going to have a, a night like that tonight. Thank you all very much. God bless you. I hope you all have a safe trip home. Opry might have been the culmination of your hard work so far, but I also think it's probably the beginning of a lot of hard work to come. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate Corey Smith. Go to CoreySmith.com. Check out his weekly Songsmith webisodes where he makes his band and his <laughs> road crew do funny and interesting things. And thank you again so much for your time. My pleasure. Up next, Sarah Robin talks with manager Dalton Sim. That's when Dirty Water TV returns. Welcome back to the Dirty Water TV music series. I'm Kevin Flight. And I'm Erica Kilda. 
There's so much music that has happened in this episode, I think it's impossible to cram it all in. <laughs> I know, we are cramming this anything. This is a, we are at one of the meccas of Boston music, the paradise here. Check it out, we got the stage, we got the people. It's a great time. But hey, we're not just about the music side, we gotta look at the back end. I'm talking management. Dalton Sim, he is one of the best in the game. Taking local acts and bringing them to the national stage. Dispatch, Guster, I mean, so many great acts, all originated with his management. And Sarah Rodman, she's catching up with him right now. Sarah, what's happening, lady? I am here at the Paradise Front Room with the fabulous, talented, wonderful, lovely Dalton Sim, personal manager for so many great bands that you love. Fun, Dispatch, Guster, Alexi Murdoch, all of the Dispatch, various offshoots, Chad, right. Chad Stokes, State Radio. You're a busy yeah. man. How are you, Dalton? I'm doing very well, thank you very much. How are you? I am so well. So tell us why we are here at the Paradise tonight. Well, tonight, uh, Chad Stokes, who's in Dispatch and State Radio, is doing a benefit for his foundation, uh, Calling All Crows. Um, he does it yearly. This is the sixth year. Uh, we started it way back at the Brattle Theater six years ago, and we've moved up uh, through the different rooms in Boston, and we're here at the Paradise tonight uh, celebrating it. You've been doing this for a long time, and all of your bands have had these great milestones, playing Madison Square Garden, winning Grammy Awards, playing these back-to-front shows that were so popular for Augusta. What for you in working with the different bands have been high points for you? I mean, I think one of the big things for me was when Guster headline Radio City Music Hall for the first time. You know, that was like my first like, wow, kind of moment. I still put that up as like one of the first big milestones. And, and then, you know, things like Dispatch playing Madison Square Garden was incredible. Or even, you know, even what Dispatch did here, you know, uh, at the Hat Shell, you know, the expectation, I, you know, when we first started having those conversations, with the city, they're like, oh, you know, we've done a lot of these before. You know, maybe twenty to thirty thousand people will show up when we do these free events. Never expecting it would be as big as it was, and that was like, when I really look back at that, I just, I'm just like, wow, that was really an incredible moment for not only those three guys, but I thought really for like independent music. So now, finally, I want to state of the state of where everybody's at. What's the the next stuff coming up for Von Guster, Dispatch, Alexi? Chad is going to go to uh, Cottage Grove. Uh, Oregon of all small places just north of the California border and Oregon uh, to work with a guy named Richard Swift. Uh, Richard is in the shins um, and so they're gonna go make a record with him in January and then the fun guys are in the middle of, of writing their their follow-up record and hopefully they're gonna be in the studio in the late spring and 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 so they're all sort of priming for a record uh, late next year or early in 2015. So. so this time next year you're going to be in hell. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hopefully. I have a really good staff that helps me out, so hopefully we can we can we can all manage it properly. So, I'm looking oh. forward to it. I this is for me this is you know, as exciting as all the other stuff is, it's really exciting for me when they go in the studio and they're creating, you know, new music, you know, cuz at the core of it I'm still a super fan too myself, you know, so I can't wait to hear what's what's next for them. And we can't wait to hear what's next for them either. Thank you so much you, for sir. sitting down and taking time to talk to us and we will look forward to all those projects sometime next year. Thank you. Back to you guys. Up next, Sarah Rodman checks out the upcoming concert scene when Dirty Water TV returns. Welcome back to the Dirty Water TV Music Series. I'm Erica Kilda. And I'm Kevin Flight. And hey, it's the Dirty Water TV Music Series, but it kind of is the Sarah Rodman Music Series I tonight. Know. She's going to be bringing us her music scene of what is hot and happening all over the city of Boston. Sarah, we're shaking. <laughs> Sarah Rodman here. I'm here at the Paradise Front Room to tell you about some shows that are coming up. Something to get you out of your warm, warm house out into the chilly, chilly night before you go into a warm, warm arena. <laughs> well, that's the plan anyway. And there's some good things coming to town that you might want to check out. First of all, we have Justin Timberlake. You may have seen him with Jay-Z at Fenway Park this past summer. Again, now J Justin's on his own. You're gonna get the full 2020 experience, parts one and two, at the TD Garden on February 27th. Justin just got nominated for a Golden Globe Award. He was up for a Grammy Award, so he should be in very good spirits when he gets to town. Up next, we have 
Paul Simon and Sting teaming up together on March 3rd at the TD Garden. So this is basically a night of fantastic songwriting, beautiful voices, and from what I understand, the guys will be performing together as well as separately. So there should be some interesting collaborations between the former Simon and Garfunkel leader and the former policeman. So that should be one to check out and maybe tell your parents about. <laughs> And finally, for all you All Country and Americana fans, the Avett Brothers are playing at the TD Garden on March 8th. They have had a tremendous run the last few years with um, albums they've put out, I Am Loving You, being nominated for Grammy Awards, being nominated for Country Music Awards all over the place. Just a tremendous band. One of the best live shows I've ever seen in my life. They're absolutely worth checking out. An Old Crow Medicine Show, another excellent band will be opening up for them. So if you've not yet seen the Avid Brothers on their way up, don't sleep on this because they are a fantastic, energetic band to go check out. Thanks to all of you for watching and go out there and see some shows. Hey, thanks a lot, Sarah. Great, great times there. We gotta wrap things up though. There's so many people that we need to thank. Crossroads presents, Live Nation, your favorite. Oh, Jack Daniels, Tennessee, honey. Oh my God. <laughs> I can't wait to have some right after we end shooting here. Quick more thing, a few more thank yous though. Dalton Sim, Chad McStokes, The Paradise for hosting this awesome event tonight. Do 617, everybody check out Do 617. It's your ultimate music listing website. And of course, most importantly, thank America, the greatest country in the world for rock and roll music just like we're going to see tonight here hey our most important there hey we're wrapping things up because we're going to join the do 617 party now so you got to know this the weekend may be over but the party never ends on dirty water tv we'll catch y'all next time <laughs>